When it comes to computers, the big question on everybody's mind is, when is the right time to upgrade? You may have a perfectly good computer that's doing everything it needs to do and it's running just fine for you, and then something new comes out. And that leads you to wonder, hey, is it time to upgrade? Now, when the Apple Silicon products started hitting the market, that M1 chip really took everybody by surprise. And still today, the M1 chip is a very capable processor. And over the last couple years, we've had a couple iterations of the M2 and the M3, and now the M4. And every time a new one comes out, you see that it gets a little bit faster, a little bit more powerful, and the pressure to upgrade continues to grow. So in this video, we're not going to be looking at incremental upgrades. We're going to be jumping straight from an M1 Mac Mini to an M4 Mac Mini. Now since the Apple Silicon products are very similar in performance from one type of computer to another, you can use these same types of comparisons to compare perhaps a M1 MacBook Air to an M4 MacBook Air, or an M1 MacBook Pro to an M4 MacBook Pro. And these are of course assuming that you're not using the Pro model, just the standard base M series processor. So in this video I'm going to show you a series of tests that I performed on both of these computers here. We'll look at some scores and we'll talk about what it means. And by the end, hopefully you can decide if it's time for you to upgrade or not. Now, before we get to the charts, let's talk about the two computers we have here. This is an M1 Mac Mini from 2020. But for these tests, I went with a 16 gigabyte model just to kind of keep it somewhat fair with the 16 gig model of the M4. So keep that in mind. If you have the eight gig model, which would be the base model, then you will see that the scores that we compare on these two would be somewhat similar, but in some cases the scores on this one may be a little bit higher than the base model. And another thing that we're going to see is important is this happens to be a 512 gigabyte model of SSD versus a 256 based model in the M4, but we'll talk about that once we get to that slide. So M1, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD, up against the M4, 16 gigs of RAM with 256 gigabytes. Now I'm a firm believer that no single benchmark is equivalent to the real life use of these products. But when you look at a series of benchmarks, then you can probably see a little bit of a trend and equate that to what your experience may be. In the end, the bottom line is really that the M1 is still a great product. And if you have one and you love it, there's no reason to think that you need to upgrade. But we all know that Apple's going to, at some point, discontinue software updates for products. So that's why you have to kind of keep these comparisons in the back of your mind. So let's take a look at the benchmarks I chose and the scores that these two got. All right, starting off with Geekbench 6, looking at the CPU speeds, and we see the single core speed there on the M4 blowing the M1 out of the water. And in fact, it's not even fair because the M4 has one of the highest single core speeds on just about any product right now. And we're looking at a 61% speed increase between that M1 and M4. When we get to the multi-core, it's even more pronounced. We're looking at a 69% increase in speed with those 10 cores versus the 8 cores on the M1. So more cores, faster cores, it just results to a much bigger increase in speed. If we had looked at these between the M1, the M2, and the M3, it would obviously not be this dramatic. But this video is all about the dramatic, looking at that big jump from M1 to M4. I went ahead and ran the Geekbench 6 GPU also, and it should be no surprise. Both the OpenCL and the Metal speeds on the M4 have jumped up tremendously over the M1. We're looking at about a 60 to 70 percent increase in both of those scores. And although these aren't dedicated GPUs like you'd find in a gaming computer, they are becoming very capable of running games. Next up, we're looking at the Cinebench 2024 CPU test. And again, no surprise, big jumps on both the single core and the multi-core scores, with that multi-core almost doubling in speed. And I don't usually use the Cinebench GPU test, but in this case I did just out of curiosity. And this test really favors that new 10 core GPU and the M4 because we're looking at almost a triple increase in the speed. Now Novabench is a product that I like to use for testing gaming PCs just to test out all the individual components to see if they're working right. So I decided to run on both the M1 and the M4 Mac Minis. And we see here again, no surprise, we've got pretty substantial jumps on the CPU, the GPU, even the memory, and all that combines to an overall score of 2500 versus the 1624. 
Now this last test kind of confused me a little bit. I ran the Blackmagic Disk Speed test on both of these devices, and I did many, many tests to try to get any kind of anomalies out of there. And no matter how many times I ran the test, the data just kept on looking like this. So what we're seeing here is a reduction in speed in both the read and write speeds. And I chose the H265 4K test, but all the scores on all the different tests were all reading about the same, where there was a slowdown between the M1 and the M4. Now initially I thought this might be because of the 256 gigabyte SSD that they used. When they switched from the M1 to the M2, they went from a dual chip setup to a single chip setup and that really reduced the throughput of the SSDs. So I thought maybe that's what we were seeing here, but after a little bit of research, it sounds like the initial teardowns are looking at that 256 gigabyte SSD in the M4 is a dual chip setup. So I can't explain why I've got a slower speed on the M4. I have both machines running the same version of the same operating system, both of them loaded with no programs except for this Blackmagic disk speed test, and the results just keep on coming up this way. And even though the read speeds aren't that much different, it's that write speed that really baffles me. Sometimes as it was running the test, that write speed would bog all the way down to about half of what this is showing, and then it would come back up. So again, it may be just something wrong with my setup, maybe something wrong with my SSD, but these are the numbers that I got. So I'll throw it back on this Geekbench 6 CPU speed slide as I make my final thoughts here, because there's no doubt this M4 processor is noticeably more powerful than the M1. But like I said at the beginning, that doesn't mean the M1 is a bad product. It doesn't mean that the M1 won't serve you well for years to come. It just means that Apple just keeps on improving. Now these results here are exactly why I don't like to iterate from one processor to the next year's processor, unless you're a professional where every second counts and time is money for you and you're rendering huge amounts of data, or video, or 3D, or crunching huge numbers. If that's what you need these for, then getting that 10 to 20% bump in speed each year is probably worth it for you. But for the average person, I'd much rather wait for a jump like this, where this M4 product is actually cheaper than the M1 came out when it launched. So faster and cheaper? Nothing wrong with that. Bottom line, if you've got an M1 and you're looking to jump to an M4, it might be a good time. If you don't have any products and you're looking to buy one, I would say for sure go with the M4 unless you find one of these M1s for really cheap. And just over the last couple weeks, as the M4 announcements came out, I've been seeing the M1 products drop down to $300 and below for like a Mac Mini. Now the M4 Mac Mini at $599 or $499 really if you can find a discount is an incredible deal. But the same can be said if you find an M1 or an M2 that someone's getting rid of in that $300 range. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, I appreciate the thumbs up. Go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. I've got more tests like this. I'm going to be doing more in the future. So hit the subscribe button. We're going to be looking at gaming on this new M4 in the near future. If you have any questions, feel free to drop those down in the comments below. But I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.